Good morning. Good morning. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What a joyful day to gather in worship this morning here at Westminster Presbyterian Church. I am so glad, we are all glad that you are here this morning, whether you're with us here in person or worshiping with us online. If you're worshiping with us online, there are, you can put your prayer request in the comment sections. And in person, we have pink prayer request cards that will be collected during our second hymn. Also in person, you can pass the friendship pads down the pew so we can get to know you a little bit better. Um, we have all these beautiful poinsettias. If one of them is yours, we invite you to take it home today. Um, we don't want them sitting here too much longer. We want them to be enjoyed at your homes. Are there any other announcements this morning? Oh, yep, hold on. While Chris comes up here, I'm going to let you know there are lots of extra hymns today. We're going to be singing a lot, so get your voices ready. I just have a really fun thing to share with everybody. So back in the mid-2000s, you all built a home with Habitat for Humanity. And Wednesday, that homeowner... Uh, paid her mortgage off. Yay. So thank you all very much. She was so excited. She paid it off early, which was even better. So we have some great things coming up in 2023, and we hope you'll be able to join us. Like I said, we've got lots of songs coming up, so after the choir sings, we will sing our first hymn.
please continue standing for our call to worship. Friends, family, and neighbors, do you love the light of the bright sun on your face, source of energy and warmth for the world? We love the light of the bright sun. Do you love the coolness of the dark night, sparkling with stars and source of rest for the world? We love the coolness of the dark night. Come and worship God who created the warmth of the day and the coolness of the night. God created the light and the darkness, and we need them both to survive. Come and see the bright light who has been born in the deepest darkness. On the brightest day and the darkest night, we are ready. you may be seated. Friends, God's mercy and grace is for all. Let us confess before God. Ever-loving God, on regular days we forget about the birth of Jesus. We forget to love you, to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves. We forget we have hope, peace, and joy in Jesus. We forget you are with us, as close as our very breath. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for calling us together to celebrate. And thank you for being with us yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And all God's people say. Friends, even when we forget, God remembers. Even when we get lost or wander off, Jesus calls us back to safety. Because of God's great love for us, there is always forgiveness and restoration to be found. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, and the Spirit of Jesus excuse me, brings peace and comfort to everyone like a breath of fresh air. Take a moment and pass the peace among your family, friends, and neighbors. You may shake hands, give fist bumps, bump elbows, wave, or use whatever greeting feels most comfortable to you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ.
Now is the time in our service for a message for the children of God. We are all called God's children, so all are invited at this time. Why not? And we have a very special message today, but we're going to give Chris a few minutes to get it ready. And so this morning, who did I say we were going to bring last night? Does anyone remember? Do you remember who I said? Who was coming to worship today? Jesus was coming to worship today, and there's someone else. The shepherds, so here's my shepherd. Because the shepherds were listening, were out in the fields, and they got so scared by the angels that the angels told them, do not be afraid. But they listened to the angels, and then they went to meet the baby Jesus. And so I brought the shepherds today, because it's kind of like the next thing that happens after Jesus was born. But today, we have a very special video that we're gonna show in just a few minutes. But we all have to be very, very quiet because the sound on it is also very, very quiet. So in order to listen and hear as much as we can, we all have to be quiet. But it is a message from the children of our church who come here pretty often. So let's see what they have to teach us today. Later the angel came to Joseph too. When Joseph found out Mary was pregnant, even though they weren't married yet, he thought that he might quietly call off their engagement. But when the angel came to him in a dream and told Joseph all the things that Mary had already been told, when Joseph woke up, he knew that, he, that what he had to do, he took Mary as his wife. Wait a while later. traveled to Bethlehem, but when they got there, no one had room for them to stay. Mary was about to deliver her child, so they squeezed into the room where families went to get warm. Mary gave birth to Jesus and then wrapped him in bands of cloth. Out in a field, shepherds were watching over the sheep. The angel appeared to them in the night sky. Do not be afraid. I am bringing good news. A child has been born who is the Messiah. Follow the star and find the child wrapped in bands of cloth. The shepherds, who were a little afraid, went to Bethlehem because they trusted God. In Bethlehem, they found the holy family they were told about and saw Jesus in the manger. They told Mary and Joseph about the angel. Westminster family. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So sorry if you couldn't hear that this morning. We will be posting it on Facebook so you can hear it in your own homes a little louder. Um, and sometime next week, I'll even try to caption it so we can hear all those words. But. Very thankful for all of our families and children who were a part of that, so thank you. <laughs> we can clap, yeah. So let's say a quick prayer now that we've heard the story of Jesus' birth. Ready? Dear God, thank you for telling us the story of the way you came into the world to show your love. May we share your love every day, just like every day is Christmas. Amen.
Let us unite in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, we turn our faces to you. We open our hearts and minds to the message of Christmas as we hear the beautiful story, the birth of Jesus. Help us to understand how this incredible moment changed everything. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. We read from chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading of the text. If you have a prayer request, we ask that you hold them up so that the ushers might collect them.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Be with us, gracious God, as we come to your word this day. Help us receive its message afresh, to have our understanding deepened by its word, and help us to lead more faithful lives because of what we hear today. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. There was a skit that was circulating on the internet. It was about the uh, ministerial alliance in a certain town that was meeting. And the question had come up, well, what are you doing on Christmas Day? And it turns out that some of the churches weren't actually having worship on that day. Others were just planning on a hymn sing. And then the Presbyterian pastor said, it's the Lord's Day, we'll be in worship. And so it is the Lord's Day, and here we are in worship. And it's good to see all of you and all of you out there watching. As we come to the text today, it is a different approach to the Christmas story that is taken by the Gospel of John. In Matthew and Luke, we have the particulars of the family arriving in Bethlehem and of the people that were there announcing the birth of the child, the people that received the good news. And so, as John approaches the text, he decides to take a step back. And rather than talking about the birth of the child on earth, he talks about the work of the word before the world began. This expansive picture is a reminder of the greatness of God of the glory of God that exists in the universe and how the power of creation is made real in the particular that comes later on. Uh, John Calvin was particularly fond of what he called natural astrology. Now, at the time Calvin was writing, and this is like, you know, 500 years ago, there wasn't a real distinction between astrology and astronomy. They just sort of blended those arts together. It was all the study of the planets. And people thought, some people thought, Luther even thought, that the planets could help determine what the future was about. But Calvin was really more impressed with just staring into the heavens. And if you can imagine what it would be like in just an ordinary city, there are no lights at night, just candles in people's homes, fires. That was what you had for light. And you could go out and you could just see the wonder of creation out there. You can see the stars. Calvin was a fan of all the sciences, and he thought that it was important that uh, we appreciate what the sciences taught and that those were gifts of the Holy Spirit too. But he was so fond of gazing into the heavens and looking at what was out there. He even and I have no idea how they figured this out, but he made reference to one of the astronomers that was able to determine that Saturn was actually bigger than the moon. And, uh, you know, I, I have no idea how you come up with stuff like that even now. Uh, but he made reference to that as saying, you know, take a moment and take in the breadth of God's wonder. And that was what happens in the Gospel of John. We're urged to step back and take a look 
at the wonder of God in all of creation and then notice how that wonder becomes particular in the one who is particularly full of grace and truth. So that's where we start today. We start with the word, the word of God that becomes flesh and dwells among us. If you think of all the words that are out there today, all the words that fill the world, uh, and so many of them used for propaganda purposes, for advertising purposes, for the purpose of uh, amusement or entertainment. But this particular word becomes the word that describes what God is about in the world. The word that's made flesh and dwells among us. In Hebrew, word, matter, thing, it's all the same. It's they just use the same word for all those things. And the same picture of word becoming deed is that picture that's presented to us in this early part of the Gospel of John. The word becomes a deed and now lives among us. Um, there's few compliments higher than saying that a man's, a person's word is his bond, is her bond. And that this truth, that the word lines up with what somebody does is rare enough in the world that it becomes such a, a unique characteristic. But in God's action, we see the authenticity of the word coming to life. The word, the deed, they're the same thing. In uh, a recent comedy called The Good Place, the premise of the comedy is that just to give people a little extra torment when they go to hell will make them actually think they're in heaven for a while. <laughs> and it, as it unfolds, um, there's, there's not a lot of grace in it. Uh, there is quite a bit of humor. And uh, this picture of uh, people being able to deceive themselves and think that this bad place is actually a good one is, uh, well, it, it's kind of true to life. And at one point they describe a particular room in hell where somebody just has to sit there as issues of the New Yorker collect in a big pile in the room. I don't know if you've ever received a magazine that comes every week but, but you can't really get a big pile that you need to get to sometime. And, and that's described as a particular kind of hell. And I think, uh, I think that image of words piling up, bearing down on us, weighing us down, if you think of all the words just the words associated with that recent January 6th report and uh, all the words offered in rebuttal, it's uh, just, it, well, it feels like a great weight. But instead, we have a single word that is filled with grace and with truth. Grace is a word that I think sometimes has lost its currency. We don't immediately associate it with anything except the song Amazing Grace, 
And it is true that that grace is amazing, but it is the grace that talks about God's particular favor. God has pursued us, claimed us, sought us out. And in that promise of God's active movement toward us, we understand that our position with God is completely different. And so in Jesus, we have that one that is full of grace. And in that one, we can understand the world in a fresh way. The one whose words and deeds line up. The one who always, always portrays what God is about in the world. If there is healing, if there is hope, if there is love, all of those things emerge in the truth that comes in Christ, full of grace and truth. The word has been made flesh and dwelt among us. Last night I had the chance to uh, preach the Christmas Eve service at uh, the Samanach Presbyterian Churches, uh, Presbyterian Church. It's one of the oldest churches in our Presbytery and actually uh, reaches back well over 150 years. Still in the church, and it's a beautiful sanctuary, they have a beautiful pipe organ, uh, the pews are still numbered. And of course, what the number on the pews designated was that it was your particular pew because you paid pew rent. And that was how churches raised their funds. I mean, and I don't know if the good pews cost more. I could just, what would a back pew go for at this church? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. But uh, oftentimes we lose track of our customs and traditions. It's just how we've done it. And the church in particular becomes a place that is so hidebound with tradition that it becomes difficult to change even when the things that we do have long exceeded their usefulness. In the midst of an institution that sometimes calcified, we are given the chance to talk about something that matters. God's presence in our midst in a way that speaks of a hope that cannot be thwarted a hope that won't be crushed, a hope that can be seen stretched across the heavens, a hope that can be seen in a babe in a manger. And in the midst of that hope, may we find our own hope renewed. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge him and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remain standing for our next hymn.
Suizide. As we come to our prayers today, we do have these prayer requests. Uh, prayers requested from Joan and Mike Coolidge. They're praying for Mike's father who has been in the hospital for the past week uh, due to complications with his kidneys. Uh, there's a prayer request for Bill Crum. Uh, he is currently in the Central DuPage Hospital and we pray for him as they seek out the right procedure for him. And then uh, this card is not signed, but they do ask for prayers requests for their father. Um, he will be moving into assisted living this week and prayers for him as he makes that transition. With uh, these concerns in mind, let us come before God in prayer. God of mystery and might, we praise and worship you. For you came in silence while all lay sleeping to enter our world as a child of humble birth. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, born of your handmaid, Mary. In his face, we behold your glory. For in his life as in his death is your gift of salvation. By your spirit, make our hearts burn with thanksgiving that we may give as we have received. Let our whole lives be gifts of praise to you. God of love and peace, we hold before you the concerns of this congregation. We pray for Mike Coolidge's father, who has been hospitalized. We pray for Bill Crum, also in the hospital in Central DuPage. And we pray for someone's father who soon will be in assisted living. We ask all these things in the gracious name of Jesus Christ, your son, who has taught us to pray together saying, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
help us to use it wisely. Amen. And now go out into the world in peace. Hold fast to that which is good. Give to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of you from this time forth and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen.